We've come to some woods in North Dorset that we visited before. We're going to have a look at some mushrooms today, but it might have gone from being too dry to being too wet. We will see. I brought the basket. We've been here before, as I say. We came here on a day out from uh, that week we spent in Shaftesbury. And we did find some porcelain mushrooms and some very nice cauliflower fungus here. It's a little bit later in the year this time. We're here in, uh, it's about the 20th of November, so it might be a bit late. Unfortunately, kind of personal logistics have made it impossible to get out and go mushroom foraging earlier in the season. But, you know, we might be lucky. We'll have a look. If not, we're just going to have a nice walk in the autumn woods. So there are some fungi about. I don't know what these are. Possibly, possibly milk caps, but I'm not sure. Not something I want to pick, but there are fresh looking fungi about, which is a good sign. More things here. Can't remember what these are called. Including some little brown mushrooms. Yeah, quite a few of them about actually. I can't can't remember for the life of me what those are called. Sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, even though that's not what we're picking, it is a hopeful sign. I think it might be a bit late in the season for cauliflower fungus now <coughs> but we, sh we should still be able to find things like bluets uh, the yellow leg chanterelles quite a few other decent edible species if we're looking in the right place you know and if we're lucky There's a ring of them, or a line of them, it goes round there. Oh, and continues along here. Sadly not edible. But again, you know, a hopeful sign. I don't know, at some point. What was that? That was a big crow, I think. But at some point we have to stop finding hopeful signs and find the thing we're hoping to find. Or not. It's always worth looking around. We've got a very big chestnut tree here, nice. Big chestnut tree with crows in the top of it. And sometimes worth having a little rummage around under the leaves because sweet chestnuts fall and they're preserved by just being here for a long time that's when that one's been eaten sometimes the squirrels won't bother actually foraging them from under the leaves because the sort of cool damp conditions preserve them I don't think we're going to find any today there well, let's look for mushrooms Now one thing that's worth looking at is if we've got kind of partially buried mossy branches like this, that can be a good place to find the yellow leg trumpet chanterelles. There's something here, a white thing and another white thing. There's an agaricus of some sort, so I think that's an agaricus, but it's in very poor condition. So yeah, there's an example of a chestnut. Not a very big one, but that's survived just by virtue of being underneath all of these leaves and stuff. So we might have a little dig around here. I'll take that one home anyway. I'll put it in a basket just in case we find an abundance of chestnuts. 
And we did come looking for fungi, but I will take chestnuts. Nothing else at the moment. One thing it would be nice to find, since this is mixed beech and oak and chestnut, would be hedgehog fungus. It's not the wrong place to find them, but I haven't seen any sign of anything that looks like hedgehog fungus yet. I mean, it might well be that my, this is going to be another less than successful fungus foraging trip in Dorset. I've not really been that successful with fungus foraging since we moved down here. We. <laughs> Which is a shame, but uh, you know, these things happen. And maybe we might need to turn our attention to foraging coastal things. Do a bit of fishing instead, maybe. Or try and find somebody who's willing to share their favorite fungus spots. I spent, you know, 20 odd years learning the best spots in Hampshire. And then we moved out of Hampshire, so. Anyway, we shall keep looking. So that's a rustula there, possibly yellow swamp rustula. Those two fungi there, but again, not worth picking. They're not in, not in great condition. There's another one of them there. Now, Jenny's finding chestnuts by the look of it, maybe. Find anything? <laughs> Probably can't see it from here, but the ground underfoot is so soft and wet. It's rained so much this autumn, and all at once as well. So this is another chestnut tree here. So yeah, sometimes if you just do that. Yeah, there we go. That. Oh, that's a hollow one. But yeah, we managed to find four tiny chestnuts so far by this method. Probably not enough energy in those chestnuts to repay us for the amount expended in finding them. Fallen oak tree there. Could be worth looking at for oyster mushrooms. Well, I can't see anything on it. And it looks like we're coming into a bit more open ground here. I'm not even really seeing any porcelain fungus on the fallen beach, which is unusual because there was just a ton of it last year. That's one of those empty sort of chestnut that never inflated but you do find them yeah there's another one that's decent although small and you do find them in amongst the leaves because obviously these are seeds so they are designed to survive the whole winter underneath the leaf litter and then uh, sprout in the spring I think this is sulfur tuft here Anything? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Well, we're getting somewhere. Not where I intended to go, but. That one is rotten. So here's a chestnut that's still inside of its husk. And at this point, the husk is actually not too prickly anymore. One of those is really squishy, the other one's nice and firm. But so yeah, just looking around, yeah, there's another one. And again, we're going to find one of those chestnuts is nice and sound. The other one's not so much. It looks like today's menu item is chestnuts. So we did find a few, but I think today is going to be more about just enjoying these lovely autumn colours. So I've got a hazel tree there that the leaves are turning golden, little brown fringes. This is a beech tree where most of the autumn colour has actually finished now. So we've got the they turn yellow, like you can see down there. 
then a sort of golden brown and then eventually dull brown and those leaves will stay on for most of the winter the beech doesn't drop its leaves until later they just turn brown and hang there but yeah i think it'll be just a nice day for a walk in the woods So this is a beech tree in an earlier stage, so the leaves are still turning yellow on this one. Chestnut over there, with the leaves turning a more orangey, sort of golden yellow. Oak, where the leaves are still slightly green, going yellow around the fringes, and they'll eventually turn brown and fall off. Beautiful colours. The bracken underneath has already turned brown and died right back. The brambles are starting to take a little bit of autumn colour as well in the leaves. There's a blackberry leaf that's turning. Interestingly, you still get blackberry flowers, look. Some in there as well at this time of year. There's not a hope of them setting fruit, although there are some rather manky looking blackberries there. But yeah, blackberries, interesting. Any little bit of warmth and they just start flowering. Right, there's something different over here. What have we got here? Clouded funnel, I think. Or clouded agaric. Another one there. A whole, whole troop of them, although these are not trooping funnel. These are clouded funnel. Clouded agaric. Now this is a peculiar one because some people are able to eat this mushroom. Other people experience really nasty gastric upsets from it. I've never tried it. I don't think today's going to be the day I do either. But this is interesting because this is, this is one of these, this is one of the very few fungi that experts recommend eating experimentally. Like try a little bit and then see if you have the reaction. If you don't have the reaction then what you've got is an abundant fungus that's uh, usually not infested with insects or anything like that. So, you know, if, you t if it turns out you can eat this fungus, then you're onto a winner. But, I don't know, something about the whole idea of eating things experimentally doesn't sit right with me. So anyway, we won't be doing that today. However, again, it's another piece of tentative evidence that we might find something else. So yeah, for most fungi, indeed for most wild food or potential food resources the idea of try it it might be okay it's, it's just the, mo the worst most terrible idea but for that one particular species and only obviously if you have identified it as that species it could be edible depending on whether you have the reaction i see something bright yellow over there oh it's just leaves i thought maybe that might be a uh, chicken in the woods it's just some nice yellow leaves. Yeah, you can see how heavily it's rained just recently. There's been quite a lot of floods around. That's an interesting tree. So this is... Uh, I don't know, actually. It's lost all of its leaves, so maybe ash. What sort of leaves we've got on the ground? We've got oak, but it's definitely not oak. We've got hazel, and there's sycamore. There's a, yeah, this could be sycamore. So this is a sycamore tree that's obviously been two trees, or actually had two stalks, that have grown up, and then at a certain height above the ground have fused back together. It might be two saplings that have grown right next to each other, or it might be one, 
that has split early on. Hard to say. That does look like one sapling where the growing tip was nipped out and it branched out into two stems and then the two stems grew up and then they decided after all there would be one tree and so they fused back together but the same sort of thing can happen if you just have two trees of the same species growing right next to each other they can fuse together into one but there you go interesting tree is that one tree or two trees debate in the comments and here's something that was a fungus or was a fungal fruiting body uh, this is an old oak tree actually i'm not going to stand here for too long because it's falling apart it's quite rotten and mostly dead not completely dead and this bell is standing under it so yeah very very significantly infested by fungus that over there looks like giant polypore that looks like maybe sulfur tuft or something like that So yeah, some really interesting trees here. Sulfur tuft again on this stack of logs. Sadly not edible. I'm being stalked by a noisy crow. I can't see him actually. Yeah, I can see him. It's not a rook, because I know what rooks sound like. All right, this is something different. Puffballs. I think they're puffballs. Yeah, little puffballs. Fun fact about puffballs, people will tell you they're not called puffballs, they're puckballs. So they were named puckballs, and then that got corrupted into puffballs. But probably the reason it got corrupted into from puck into puff is because they puff. When, you, when they're full of dry spores, you give them a little tap. You won't do it now because the weather's so damp. You give them a little tap and the spores cut. There you go. The spores puff out in a cloud or a dribble in this case because there's water in there as well. So yeah, it used to be called puck balls. Corrupted into puff balls, but corrupted for probably a, a sensible semantic reason. Different fungi here. Don't know what these, these might be. Velvet shank. I'm really not good at identifying velvet shank, and there are some potentially quite dangerous lookalikes, like um, this Gallerina species that grow on rotting wood, that are easy enough to mistake if you don't know what you're doing, which is the case for me. I don't know enough about this fungus to be able to identify it with confidence. So we're just going to look at it, enjoy it in situ, leave it be, take some pictures maybe, take lots of pictures in fact, see if I can try and learn a bit more about it from my books when I get back home. Here's another one to talk about, giant polypore. Last time we were here last year we saw a ton of this, we saw, saw it on nearly every big beech tree. I think it's probably been and gone this year, but anyway there's a the specimen that's still just about uh, well, you can see what it is anyway. Edible when it's small, I think that one. Resembles Hen of the Woods, but it's not Hen of the Woods. Well, here's something. Look at this. What is this? I don't even know. Don't know. Really weird. Is that a, it's just a very large clouded funnel? It might be. Yeah. Yeah, all the way over here as well. I mean, the growth habit is about right for a clouded funnel. They're all over the place here. But there's a whole load of it. And more over here as well. Well. Anyway, it looks like we are going to be going home empty-handed today because I haven't found anything I really want to pick. But it has been very enjoyable, just trampling around through the rustling leaves, the autumn leaves, and the squelching mud, and just enjoying our time out here in the woods in the autumn. Look at the size of that one. That is amazing. I've never seen them that big before. 
That's what's thrown me off here. Look at that boot for scale. Sausage fingers for scale. That's the size of a dinner plate, that one. But yeah, we spoke about that earlier anyway. The Canal de Garrick is one of those ones, if that is the same thing actually, where, that where some people can eat it with impunity, other people will suffer terrible consequences. The Canal de Garrick. Uh, clouded funnel. That's something else. That's a that's a little puffball. Lycoperdon perlatum, I would think. Yeah. Something else in here. I think it's going to be more of the same. Uh, yeah. Again, clouded agaric, I think. But look how different they are. Over there, huge, huge, robust things. They must just be either a different subspecies or um, or the conditions over there are just absolutely spot on for them and they're doing very well, whereas here they're just doing normal. Lots of teeny tiny things there. No idea. Well, I think we're probably gonna call it a day in a minute. We'll just have a little wander down this hill, see what else we can find if anything, and then maybe call it a day. So yeah, tons and tons of those clouded agarics down there, if you can just about see that. Seen loads and loads of them in the woods here, but I don't fancy the risk of, I don't fancy experimenting to see if that does or doesn't give me a stomach upset. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be having mushrooms for dinner today, but we do have some chestnuts, so I don't know whether I'm gonna include cooking them in the video. But anyway, we've had a lovely afternoon walking in the autumn woods and even though the basket is devoid of mushrooms we've had a nice bit of fresh air some exposure to the beauty of nature in autumn and time to go home now a cup of tea and reflect on a day so i hope that's been interesting thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon